Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and those of non-specific gender. <clears throat> I think that's the way I meant to say it now. Anyway, I want to pop a quick video here up. Um, it's Saturday morning, and the first client of the day was an extremely irate customer. Uh, a new customer, actually, a new client that's coming on board. Now, how can I say this? Right, very irate customer. And he was irate because he failed a DVA enforcement audit, okay? An official departmental transport compliance audit. Now, why he's so upset about it is because he has been audited by fours and, um, you know, he passed that audit, but he failed an official audit. Now, to defend fours, one thing that I will start off with very, very clearly is saying that fours is a voluntary, voluntary um, scheme. Okay, you sign up to fours, you sign up to implement their policies and their procedures for them to give you a sticker to put on the back of the lorry, which pulls off the paintwork, but anyway, right? So that's what they're there to do. It's no difference if you come on board with their compliance program. Yes, it's a lot more in depth. You pass their audit, we do the three month inspections, but it's still, if you want to become TCTS compliant uh, or certification, certified compliant, well then that's a different story. It doesn't matter where you go. It doesn't matter if it's FTA or HA. It doesn't matter where you go for that, okay? However, the difference here with what this poor man is um, issued with, he got a completely failed DVA audit, okay? And in fairness, DVA, the Transport Enforcement Authority, were completely right on this case. Their decision was spot on. In fact, they actually missed two areas, in my opinion, where they give an amber rate and it should have been red, and um, no doubt it will be looked at by TRU at some stage, you know. But I understand where the guy's coming from. I understand his frustration. I understand why he would be, you know, so irate about it. So when he's contacting the auditor, and the auditor, you know, fails to answer the questions, which, you know, I know a lot of the auditors out there, and they're good guys. Like, they're, a lot of them's not transport specific. They haven't got relevant backgrounds. It's, it's just an audit and auditing job is a box ticket exercise you know you go into four section one two three four five whatever it is and you take the boxes does the guy have it so for example it's like any auditing system guy it doesn't matter if it's for your garden doesn't matter if it's for pp and uniforms doesn't matter if it's for if you know you want to audit your your key retention for forklifts it doesn't matter what sort of audit it is okay and not as a systematic approach put down on a bit of paper um, or electronically to see if you have it or not and reviewed um, on a regular basis. Now, the problem that I have with this is that, you know, and I say to defend Ford as well, but the problem I have with this is to date, this will be the 12th guy, the 12th company audited by Ford and recognized by Ford who has failed an official audit, okay? Now, for example, when that audit's done on them and they, they tick the box for tight graphs, okay, on driver's hours, you're taking the box because you have a system in place. You're taking the box because um, you have data on a screen. You're taking the box because you work on time regulation policy somewhere, okay? However, we go in and look at it, or DVA, or DVSA, or RSA, or road policing, go and look at it, and we get mass manipulation. We get driving without a card. We get using other people's cards because we bring the investigative practice together then to find out whether you're complying with operator's license, construction use regulations, road traffic act, road traffic order, etc. So, Although this guy is completely off his head here about it and I got him settled down enough and he phoned the auditor and I spoke to the auditor and he couldn't answer any questions because all it was, well, is it in section one or section seven? You know what I'm saying to the guy, but, you know, everything is in them sections, but DBA don't, you know, because the force isn't regulated in any way. It's not, there's nothing that can be taken out of it. You're only as good as, I suppose, the auditor or as good as the system that is put in place. Now, DBA in this particular case, um, their decision was spot on, okay? And, you know, we'll now go and, and fight for the operator if he gets into a standard of compliance. Um, and to him, you know, he's saying, well, what is the whole point of having this sticker on, on the vehicle? And I'm saying, well, you know, it's, it's in there, and that's okay. A sticker put in the back of the road does not make you compliant in any way. And I have seen companies that have bought trailers with a four sticker on the back that they're not even the accredited body. You know, that's not their Ford ID. And it just happens to be still on the vehicle. So from that point of view, it doesn't matter. DBA and DBSA, Transport Enforcement, they're out there for two particular reasons. Number one is road safety. And number two is fair competition. Okay? 
So no matter what way you look at it, and I have been saying this for 10 years now, no matter what way you look at it, an engine idle policy, okay, has never and will never save lives. A sticker on the back of a bloody vehicle saying the vehicle's torn and left won't save lives. An indicator that flashes and a voice comes on and says the vehicle torn and left, that can't save lives because if we're talking about London, how many languages do you need that in? Okay, so don't get me started on that. It's just a policy and procedure. And I said to the guy, go and get somebody just, you know, force audit it and go in and do your audits, whatever you want to do. Like, because as I say, there's very little relevant or specific background in it, and that's okay because it could be. They could come from the likes of ourselves, you know, qualified and lead auditor standard, or they could be just doing an online auditor course, you know, a couple of hours online or an hour online. And it doesn't really matter. Or they can get trained internally in house to go out and deliver the audit because the audit is the box ticking exercise of a systematic approach to the end goal. Um, but the investigative standard isn't put into it and it's not required to be put into it. Now, I know where the guy's coming from, I understand where he's coming from, um, but we'll have to go and pick up the pieces again. So that's the twelfth one, the twelfth one, okay? Now, you know I always give out about these so-called transport consultants. Uh, they're they just, they wind us up to such a, a level because we, we see their work all the time. We see, we tidy up the mess all the time with them, you know? And as I've said in all of my videos or any of my posts, there are some damn good ones out there. There'd be maybe four or five percent throughout the UK and Ireland. Um, and there are some good ones out there, you know. But I'll tell you something. I was in England a couple of weeks ago, and I was chatting to a top of the range consultant, as he called himself. And, you know, after about an hour or two, he was looking to get involved with us. He was actually looking to come and work for us and all. And without consulting him, I said, you know, you don't, you're not going to be fit to do what we do. And he was bad-mouthing another guy that does transport consultancy work not far away from him. Now, this particular chap I also know, not personally, but I know him from social media and stuff, you know. And um, this other chap, in my opinion, is 10 times better than the consultant number one. For the simple reason that he's out at the vehicles. He's out under the vehicles. He's out delivering training. He's out getting CPD. He contacts us on a regular basis looking for information. He contacts us on a regular basis looking to meet up. Um, you know, and it's that sort of get together where it's to stop the bullshit box ticking exercise, okay? So getting back to my point, guys, I'm not sure people know that. You need to distinguish between the two. You know, there's no, as I say, Ford, for example, it's a voluntary scheme, does exactly what it says in the tin. It's a scheme to voluntary, voluntarily get yourself recognized uh, onto their database. If you come on board with their compliance program, it's the same thing. A bit tougher, a bit harder to do, but it's the same thing. You can go to wherever, FTA, RHA, who else is there? Whoever else out there, like every dog in the street does it now. But when it comes to the crunch, when you're playing with the big boys, can you protect yourself? Can you defend yourself? Now this guy and these auditors on the scheme will walk away from him. Of course they'll walk away from him, that's okay. Um, when it comes to working with the big boys, you know, can you defend them? <laughs> can this guy get defended? We're going to have to put a hell of a lot of work into this. We're going to have to go to the Transport Regulation Unit. We're going to have to go to the Enforcement Officer themselves, you know, and say, right, listen, this is all we can do to get this guy up and going and try and, you know, put a system in place going forward and, you know, show massive improvement in a very, very short period of time. That's what it needs to happen. Now, a couple of weeks ago, um, I was involved in a, an official PS audit for between an operator and transport enforcement. And the guy again was um, Force Registered or Force Audit. And he told them, he kept saying to the enforcement officer during the questions, um, under a recorded interview, you know, cautioned interview, he kept, he kept giving them the answer that was, yeah, well, I have that because Force states this and Force states that and all. And the, the enforcement officer, who I know, looked at him and says, what's Force? What, what are you talking about? I'm looking here at legislation, nothing states it. Like, the enforcement officer didn't never heard of force before, never dealt with didn't know what it was, nor do they care what it is. Because the guys run about with magnet use, manipulation attack graphs and using another driver's card. So it doesn't matter who you're with, and um, was it detected at any stage, you know? So guys, just want to pop up that quick video to because it's a regular course. We're going number twelve. This is our twelfth one. Um, who's Force registered or Force audited and has failed an official DVA audit. So to defend Force, they never state at any stage that you'll be a compliant operator. However, it is what it is. Anyway, guys, have a nice day.